So are you going to Oahu, Hawaii, and you're either too cheap or broke to get a rental car for your time there? There's no judgment in that question because that was my mentality and you definitely can have an amazing time in Oahu, Hawaii, even for like a week or so without any rental car whatsoever. I was there for a month and mostly got by without a rental car. So I'm definitely very qualified to give you an amazing seven day, one week itinerary for Oahu, Hawaii with no rental car. That being said, let's start off with day number zero or arrival day. So unless you're a very strong swimmer or you're taking a very fast speedboat, you'll be arriving at the Daniel K. Inoue International Airport. Probably a little bit jet lagged, it's definitely a little bit tired. So let's just get to your hotel and check in. I do recommend staying in Waikiki, which people might kind of roll their eyes or scoff at because it's very touristic. It's like a little bit of a concrete jungle in the middle of Hawaii, built only for tourists, but the convenience really will be there. So head to your accommodation there. I really recommend taking an Uber, if not a bus, if you want to save a little bit more money, but Uber is very convenient. It could be anywhere from like $20 to $50, so keep that in mind, but get your accommodation, check in, relax as much as you'd like, but make sure you head to the nearby Waikiki Beach for sunset. Hopefully it's in walking distance from your accommodation. Take in the amazing views of the old volcano, which is now a volcanic crater called Diamond Head in the distance, because you're going to get a little bit more acquainted with it tomorrow, actually. Then after the sunset, or around the sunset, get some food, get some banana, banana soft serve right on the beach, which is soft serve made from bananas, which is really cool and delicious. And it also has a tropical fun feel that you probably went to Oahu, Hawaii to feel in the first place. So with that being over everybody, day zero, now moving on to day number one, our first full day of adventure in Oahu, Hawaii. So after you're dreaming and reminiscing already about your first sunset in Oahu, we are heading to that viewpoint we're talking about. That is the Diamond Head Crater because we are going to hike that behemoth. Now it's actually really easy to reach the Diamond Head Crater. All you need to do is take the Hui local bus, which is about 20 to 30 minutes, or you can walk, which is about 50 minutes, which, hey, do you wanna walk there and burn out your legs a little bit? It's up to you, depends on how much energy you have to spare. Either way, the hike isn't so difficult. It costs about $5 to enter, walking that is, which you'll be doing because you don't have a car, of course. And I believe nowadays you have to either reserve a time slot or something like that. It's also very busy, so the earlier you go, the better. The hike itself is really cool. It's not too difficult, like I said. You go through a little bit of a tunnel, and at the end, you will get some amazing views of Waikiki, Waikiki Beach, and some other parts of the island which you're probably super excited to explore, which we'll definitely do on other days besides today. So once you finish hiking Diamond Head, return back down the way you came, it's an out and back trail, and head to the nearby neighborhood called Kaimuki. Now Kaimuki is a really cool and trendy sort of hip, and it's sort of like a college town feel neighborhood, which you can get to either by walking about 30 minutes or taking a six minute bus ride. The choice is yours, everybody. Again, it depends on how worn out your legs are. And keep in mind, we'll be doing a lot of walking on other days as well. Once you get to Kaimuki, I'm sure you're gonna be very hungry. You're gonna want something to eat, which is great because there's lots of cool and delicious restaurants for you to try out. I recommend trying nudes. Just make sure to type it in Google as N-O-O-D-S, not N-U-D for obvious reasons, unless you want some different sort of search results. Now, nudes specializes in ramen and they have lots of good ramen selections, which you can also take a picture and tag them on Instagram with hashtag N-O-O-D-S for the same reason we talked about earlier to not get the spelling wrong. There's also a place called Plant-Based Paradise, which is a really cool and beautiful yoga studio, which has really fresh and delicious plant-based foods, which you might be into or you want something healthy after doing that hike. You can also get some boba tea at this place nearby called Cow Cow Tea, which is really cool and fun and maybe want something refreshing too after being in the sun and hiking. Either way, after you've explored and ate at this neighborhood to your heart's content, take the bus back to Waikiki, chill out, and if you're up for it, I always recommend trying to catch a sunset at Waikiki Beach because you can just walk there and sunsets in Hawaii are always an amazing way to end the day. So hopefully you got a good night's sleep because day two is going to be packed full of fun and adventure, of course. We're going to start our day as early as you can. Don't go crazy with it, but head to Coco Head Crater, 
which is just like Diamond Head, a previous volcano, which is no longer active, which has a massive crater that you can see from the top. And we're going to hike up this one as well. Although Coco Head is definitely more of a difficult hike, although it's a little bit shorter. It's only maybe about like a mile or so to the top, but it is like a Stairmaster. It used to be a railway where they would bring up um, supplies to a little bit of a bunker at the top, a pillbox, which is a thing that exists in Hawaii. They're old lookout um, sort of bunkers from World War II that are no longer needed today, of course. Anyway, you're gonna have to go up a lot of stairs. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be a workout, but take your time, don't rush too much. Once you get to the top, you'll have some amazing views of not only the ocean, but of Hanauma Bay. Maybe you can see Diamond Head in the distance, which I just hiked yesterday, and you can be like, oh yeah, that guy, I remember hiking that. It's kind of a cool feeling, you know? So spend some time there, then head back down, and you are probably, again, going to be hungry and thirsty, so walk to the nearby Kona Brewing Company. It's located just nearby, not too far of a walk. And here you can get some refreshing beers from Kona Brewing Company, which is a very famous brewing company. And not only can you get some beers and food here, but you have some stunning views of the nearby mountain. And there's a little bit of a bay that boats can come into and dock up at. Really good atmosphere, really good drinks. Haven't had too much food there, but a great place to stop by and get some air conditioning and just chill out and relax after a great start to the day from doing another hike. Now, once you have spent enough time at Kona Brewing Company, I recommend walking from here to China Walls. Now, China Walls is a not so hidden gem. It's a really cool area. It's supposed to be the youngest part of the island where you have all of these cliffs that are made by cooled lava that you can walk around and get some really cool views of the ocean. And it's also a perfect sunset spot. More than this, it's a place where people hang out and play music and have a good time. And the more daring adventurous people, which you might be if you're gonna like my itinerary because it's a little bit adventurous based, spoiler alert, do some cliff jumping. Now, this is a really fun activity to do, but do it with caution. Make sure you don't try and climb back up the cliffs when the waves are terrible because it could end pretty treacherously for you. And only do it if you're comfortable with your swimming and just the situation overall. Again, you came to Oahu to have a good time, not to have a horror story. So once you've caught sunset here, walk back towards the bus area, take a bus back to Waikiki, call it a night. That was day two, everybody. An unforgettable adventure for sure, but it only gets even better. Now day number three, we are going to my favorite beach on the entire island, which is going to be Lanakai Beach. Now this is another place where of course you'll be taking the bus. It's a little bit of a longer bus ride. You actually have to take two buses to connect. It's gonna take about an hour and a half to two hours, but be patient because it will be worth it and you'll spend the entire day in this area. First, I recommend stopping by Kailua. If you're arriving in the morning, head to Sunrise Shack to get some smoothie bowls or an acai bowl, or it's a nice healthy but nutritious start to the day. Then head to Kailua Beach if you just wanna check it out, hang out for a little bit, do some swimming. It's really pretty, the water's really nice, and it's a good place to check out. But my favorite beach of all is just next door, which is going to be Lanakai Beach. Now Lanakai Beach has beautiful white sand, gorgeous blue, relatively calm water because there's lots of rocks that stop the waves from coming and you have some epic views of the Mokolua Islands, which are two little twin islands right in the distance, which is an unbelievable sight. Now because of the calm water, this is the ultimate place to snorkel in this side of the island. I've seen sea turtles, tons of different tropical exotic fish and everything else in between, except for maybe sharks because I really don't wanna see them. So that's it, enjoy your beach day here. If you wanna make it extra adventurous, you can hike to the Lanakai pillbox right behind you. It actually makes a really good sunrise hike, but it's gonna be hard to do when taking the bus. So keep that in mind. And if you are as enamored as I was by the Mokulua Islands, you can actually rent a kayak for a day or half a day from this place called Kailua Beach Adventures and kayak over to the islands, spend some time there, explore some beaches, do some snorkeling and just really have a full out adventure. So if you want a lazy beach day, that's possible. If you want an adventurous day, that's also very possible. Really relax and or adventure and take in this beautiful east side of Oahu with these two gorgeous beaches I'm talking about. Kailua and Lanakai. So moving on to day four, we've done beaches, we've done hikes, we've seen volcanoes, we've done some snorkeling. Let's do something a little bit different, which is still gonna be really cool. On the east side of the island, take the bus for, again, a little bit of a long bus ride, maybe close to an hour and a half, and starting our day off at Byoto Inn, which is actually a gorgeous Japanese temple set right up at the foot of the Ko'olau Mountains. Now, Byoto Inn, like I said, is a Japanese Buddhist temple, 
which has lots of cool sights for you to see, including some beautiful structures, a koi fish garden, a really massive bell, and it's a really cool cultural twist that you can experience because Hawaii is definitely heavily influenced by some of the Pacific Islands and East Asia, specifically the Japanese as well. Now, once you've explored Byoto Inn to your heart's content, take the bus, but not all the way back to Waikiki, stop along the way at the Ho'omaluia Botanical Garden, which is pretty close to Byoto Inn Temple. Now, this is going to be, as it sounds, a really beautiful place, a botanical garden with some, again, amazing views of the Ko'olau Mountains. And here you can walk through a variety of different gardens with some truly beautiful, exotic, bizarre tropical plants on display. Not in the greenhouse, but just out in nature because that is the climate of Hawaii, everybody. Do that, explore this, and then when you're done, head back to Waikiki. It's gonna be a lot of busing today, a lot of walking around, but that's okay because you're here to adventure without a rental car. Get back, get some food in the area, relax, and that's it for this day, everybody. We still have a lot more of amazing things coming up soon. So for day five, we've been working up to this this whole time. We're going to do my favorite hike in Oahu, arguably, but definitely my favorite. So this is going to be the Kuli O'o Ridge Trail, which is actually, compared to the others, only a 30 minute bus ride away, which is gonna feel like five minutes at this point. Although keep in mind, you'll have to walk about 30 minutes from the bus stop to the start of the trail, but it's through a really pretty and chill neighborhood. Now the hike itself is absolutely amazing. It takes you through like three sort of different climates when you eventually reach this open ridge area where you will get some, again, stunning, stunning, amazing views of the mountains around you, the valley, and some of these other notable landmarks that we've already explored so far, such as Cocoa Head and Diamond Head, Lanakai Beach, the Mokolo Islands, which would be a cool little way to reflect on your time in Oahu so far. Now, once you're done with this five or six mile or so trail, we're gonna head back to Waikiki on the bus, shower up, chill, give your body a little bit of a break before we go out for dinner, because keep in mind, everybody, this is gonna be Friday. We're starting this itinerary being like a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, day five, so we're having dinner at Tane Vegan Izakaya. Now, if you're vegan or not vegan, I really don't care because I've heard from everybody that's one here, this place is amazing. As somebody that's been to Japan myself, I can honestly say this is the best sushi I've ever had in my entire life. The atmosphere is really good as well. They have a ton of different sushis that you will be drooling after just looking at the menu, and it is so delicious and such an amazing place to eat. It'll probably be no, sorry, I'm putting a lot of pressure on it, but it'll be one of your favorite food experiences probably of your entire life. Now, if you enjoy dinner and you wanna keep the fun going, maybe you had like a little cocktail, some sake, some beer, I really recommend heading on the same street, just a little bit away, maybe like a five minute walk or so to this place called Toma Enterprise for some private room karaoke, which is one of my favorite ways to do karaoke that you can do it on Oahu. It's BYOB, so stop at a little store and get some drinks if you're interested in doing that sort of thing. If you're a sober person, that's totally fine. Sing to your heart's content by yourself or with some friends in your own privacy and do this until you are blue in the face or you can't speak anymore, then head back home and chill out because that was a pretty chill day, but definitely a fun and eventful one as well. So hopefully you're not too hungover. It's day six, you can sleep in a little bit, but we will do something in the morning, which is something you can only do on Saturday. So it's really important to follow this itinerary this way if possible, which is to visit the Kaka'ako Farmer's Market. Now this is located near the Ala Moana area, which you can definitely take the bus to. And I believe the farmer market ends at noon, which isn't too late for a farmer's market. Now this is a really cool experience because there are so many vendors where you can get some fresh fruit, some fresh produce, some small businesses that make some delicious food, whether it's Hawaiian, some Pan-Asian, Japanese, American, bakeries. It's a little bit pricey, I'm not gonna lie, but hey, we've been pretty frugal and cheap so far, so it's okay to splurge a little bit on food here. until your heart's content, until the market closes, hopefully. And then while you're in the area, if you wanna do some shopping, maybe you do, maybe you don't, that's okay. Head to the Ala Moana Mall, which is actually, I think the biggest outlet mall, outdoor outlet mall, whatever you wanna call it, in the United States. There's lots of good shopping options here. Now, if shopping's not so much of your thing, or it, maybe it is, I still recommend afterwards, or instead of heading to Don Quixote, which is actually 
a Japanese sort of department store, I guess you can call it, but it's completely different than like Walmart. And the one in Hawaii is no exception. This is a really cool place to get souvenirs for a really cheap price and to see some really interesting either Asian or Japanese or Hawaiian goods that you can just look at and kind of be like, huh, I've never seen that before. Or man, that advertisement's a little bit out of left field compared to what we've seen in America because Hawaii is in America. But one of my favorite things about it is it has that sort of Asian influence, which makes it feel definitely a little bit more exotic than let's say Idaho or somewhere like that. And that can be it for day six if you'd like. If you're more of the adventurous type and you don't want to shop and maybe you get up early and then you stop at Don Quixote and you still have a lot of time in the day, you can do another hike. I really recommend doing Three Peaks. It's one of my favorite hikes I've ever done in my life. It's about an hour or so on the bus, so you have to incorporate that time as well, but you'll not regret it because the views are amazing. It's a little bit sketchy, so be careful and only do the first peak of three if you feel comfortable but it is a, certainly an adventure. So if you're an adventurous person, that's something to consider as well. If you're not and you're wiped from our itinerary so far, I don't blame you. Chill out, catch another sunset, maybe enjoy the pool at your hotel, eat some food and call it a day for day six. So finally, sadly, we are going to begin day seven, which is your last day here in Hawaii, your last full day. Here we are not gonna do anything too crazy. We're just gonna relax and take in the local area of Waikiki. So to start the day, we're going to get an acai bowl, which in my opinion is the national food of Hawaii. It's not poke, it's acai bowls, everybody. Two of my recommendations are going to be alo, a yellow, that is, and island vintage, which is definitely very popular. Man, I'm thirsty. It's time to have a drink of coffee, oh. I quite. Get your acai bowls to go and eat them at the beach. You can go to Waikiki Beach, or what I recommend is going just a little bit further past Waikiki Beach to Queens Beach, which is right past this little pier area. You'll know what I'm talking about. Eat your acai bowl and bring your snorkeling equipment, if you have it or you want to rent it at the beach, to this area because this is my favorite area to do snorkeling besides Lanakai. Here I've seen many beautiful fish, even including a puffer fish, which was a really cool experience. So once you are ready to go out and let's be honest, eat again, we're going to get some delicious and reasonably priced food, actually a really good price considering it's Oahu, at Marukame Udon. Now, in case you don't know, udon is like a Japanese sort of soup dish, but the noodles are very thick. The broth here is really delicious as well. You can kind of customize and add some extra stuff to your plate as well. It is very busy, so keep that in mind, but I think it's worth the wait, especially if you can time it at the right time. Now, if you still have some more room left over, I really recommend going to Ice Monster, which is, all this is in Waikiki, everybody, so it's all walking, no buses for today. Thank the Lord and get some delicious Taiwanese shaved ice. It's definitely different than the snow cone, but it's very smooth and it just feels effortlessly like it's melting on your tongue like it's snow itself. Very delicious, really good, definitely recommend it if you've never tried it and it also fits the tropical feel perfectly. Now while you're still exploring and enjoying Waikiki, I really recommend going to the International Marketplace where they have lots of cool stores, some good shopping as well. And at the top floor, they have a Japanese marketplace called Mitsua, which is really cool. You can get some little snacks and cool stuff here that you can maybe eat back at your hotel room if you have the room or bring to the beach later. Because of course, everybody, how else can we end our time in Oahu than a sunset on Waikiki Beach? You can either have a bit of a beach day with your own food or drinks that you buy, or if you wanna try something else, I recommend going to the Barefoot Beach Club where they have actually live music every night. And it's a really good place to eat some food. The food isn't my favorite on the island, but some days it's hit or miss, to be honest. And you can get some nice views of the sunset while listening to some local music and just really reminiscing and taking in all the things we've done in our week here in Oahu. Because that's it, everybody. That's the end of day seven. Next day, you are heading out of here and you will be thinking about this trip, of course, for a long time, because hey, let's review all the things we did on this itinerary. We hiked to a volcano. We went to some cool neighborhoods. We ate some delicious Hawaiian and Asian food. We went to some beautiful beaches. We did some snorkeling. We maybe kayaked to an island. We hiked to a ridge and got some unbelievable views. We visited a Japanese temple, a botanical garden. We did some cliff jumping. We had some local beer from a brewery. It's so much, everybody, and I promise you, if you follow this itinerary, this is the best possible way that you can enjoy yourself without a car. Of course, there are many other amazing things you can do on Oahu, such as visit the west side of the island and the North Shore, but it's gonna be very hard to do this without a car, and it's not gonna be very time friendly. So if you wanna see more of these things to do on Oahu, make sure to subscribe 
subscribe to my channel because I went to all these places. Some days I rented a car and it was absolutely worth it, but I understand if that's not something that's feasible for you. Now, lastly, I know we went over our itinerary, but I just kind of want to go over some tips and notable points. As you can tell, this itinerary is for someone that's very adventurous. If you like to hike and swim and snorkel, this is definitely for you. If you want to just enjoy your resort and your hotel, just stay in Waikiki. Maybe do an excursion here or there, enjoy Waikiki Beach, eat some food, go shopping. You can have a great time as well, although you're missing the best bits of the island, in my opinion. Also, you'll be spending a lot of time on the bus for some days. If it's something that doesn't interest you that much, it's something you really can't get around. However, you can get your Hui bus pass online. You can buy tickets and daily fare there, which will make it a lot easier to board the bus as needed. Another great tip for the bus is to use Google Maps. This will tell you not only bus times, but show you bus routes, what buses you will need to connect, and it really gives a very safe and predictable way to get around the island and taking the bus, which of course we will have to do a lot of this itinerary. Also, this itinerary is definitely budget-minded. We didn't do anything crazy like surfing or helicopter tours. After all, if you are going to do those things, you probably wouldn't shy out in getting a rental car because, hey, that's definitely a budget-friendly thing. So that's all for my itinerary, everybody. Which of these days sounds the best? Do these things sound interesting and fun to you? Have you done them yourself? Let me know down in the comments below. And of course, subscribe for more Oahu and Hawaii adventure, travel, guides, content, and everything of the sort. Thanks for watching, everybody. See you in the next video. Peace.